Okay, welcome to the final part, uh, what will hopefully be the final part of this um, tutorial. In this video, we are going to create the login page um, using the backend functions that we have previously created. So if you're just joining me now, what the heck are you doing? You must be mad. Go back and watch part 0, then 1, then 2, then 3, then start this video. Okay, so that's my ridiculous intro done. Um, let's just get started, really. It should probably be quite a short one, because... We've done the most complicated bits. <laughs> okay, so at the moment, um, this does absolutely nothing. It just nothing at all except this link, which will work. Uh, okay, so let's just open up the file. Go to login. You see, at the moment we have nothing. Uh, we're going to wrap some PHP around here to make sure that well, to make sure to mean uh, to make it so that that only shows up. Um, when there is not an error, that's going to be replaced by the error because there's no point um, having the user. Um, they, I mean, obviously, when they've tried to log in, they have an account, so they don't need to register. There's a logic behind that, anyway. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, as always, is include the init file. Include uh, include um, init.inc.php. Uh, which is in the core folder, which needs quotes, which is in the core folder, init dot <laughs> dot uh, inc dot php, like so. Then we need to define the errors array, because we're using the same error sort of system, method, whatever you want to call it, as in the register page. So we're going to give the errors array a default value of an empty array, like so. Then we're going to check if the form has been submitted if is set uh, and we're going to check the um, post username and oh, look, done it wrong again every time at least I realised that time and post password fields and if they have both been um, if both of these exist um, because these are two form fields see the username one here and the password one here um, if both of these exist, we're going to check for the error conditions, and then we're going to try and log in the user. Uh, so, yeah, what we do here is, um, yeah, uh, the first two error conditions are empty password and empty username, all the way around. Uh, so first, we check if the username is empty. So if empty post username then we want to add to the errors array like so and we're just going to put um, the username cannot be empty and I've noticed again I'm getting better or worse hmm. and we want to do the same thing for the password so we're just going to do if empty post password and what we want to do if that is true is set something in the errors array, add something to the errors array, I should say. The password cannot be empty. Mem Pty. Right. Um, and the next check is we want to check if the credentials are valid. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much the next thing. Um, we only want to do that if. Um, there are no, er no errors so far because this involves a MySQL query. Um, it makes sense to try and keep this this function call to a minimum, the valid credentials function, because it does a MySQL query. And sort of in PHP, MySQL queries are one of the slower operations. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to check for as well at the same time is if empty errors so if these basically this is checking if these two conditions um, haven't been met so if the er yeah if we get to here and the errors array is still empty because it started off as empty so if empty errors um, and valid credentials pretty sure that's how I spell it uh, post username and post password right password yep 
So if the errors array is still empty and the um, credentials that they've supplied are valid, we want to um, log them in here. So we'll do log in. Um, and if it's if they're not, then we want to show um, a add to the errors array a message saying your password's wrong. Um, so we're going to add into the errors array in this else statement errors equals. I mean, it'd be so sort of fine just to check if this is false as the sort of last condition, and then check if. Um, okay, yeah, let's let's do that. Um, making another change, sort of right at the end. Pretend none of this happened. So what I'm going to do instead of that is check if file credentials equals false. And if it does equal false, what we're going to do is add to the errors array again. Errors equals um, username user name slash password incorrect. Um, the reason we're doing this is that it'll just sort of look a bit nicer, I suppose. The code will look neater and the output will look neater if you get all the errors generated in the same way. So, yeah, that's why I've just changed my mind completely about what I'm doing. <laughs> um, I mean, this this quit risk function will only be called if the form is submitted. So unless someone cl sits there clicking the form load, it's not going to be called a lot of times. Um, but I mean, they could do equally. They could do the same thing supplying data. So yeah, uh, it's not a problem. Okay, so uh, what we want to do here is check if um, there have been no errors. So we're going to do if empty errors. Sorry about changing my mind, by the way. That's terrible. I know. Um, but yeah, this way is how I'm doing it for this. The other way would have worked too, but it would have looked messy. So, um, if there are no errors, if the errors array is empty, if it's got no elements, we are going to log in the user. And the way we're going to do that is set their session. So we're going to set session user name spelled right. I'm checking that now. Equals um, HTML entities HTML I E S post user name. Oh, we did it right. Good. Um, again, XSS attacks. Go and watch my video on those for what HTML HTML entities is for. Or the previous tutorial, because I'm pretty sure I mentioned it at the end of that. Um, so once they've been logged in, we are going to redirect them to the protected page. So this would normally be the index of your site. Um, you could just do it to a slash if you want, whatever. So I'm, I'm just going to do protected header every time. Location protected.php and we're going to kill the script here because we don't want anything following the header because the browser's moved on. Um, so yeah, that's it for this sort of logic at the top. Um, we can just check it for syntax errors by reloading the page. See there are none, which is a good sign. Um, okay, so the last thing we're going to do in this file is replace this with um, the errors, if there are any and make sure the username stays if they submit the form and get an error. Um, so we can do that using the same method as before. Um, in fact, I'll literally do it by copying and pasting it. Um, if you remember before, in the previous part, we had this value equals and there check for the username. Um, I'm just going to copy this and copy, go to login and paste it here. Because it means exactly the same thing. It's basically the same field if you think about it. Um, so this is just checking if the post variable's username is entered, has been entered. If it has, um, display it with HTML entities. If you don't know what I'm doing, go back and watch part three. Watch my videos in the right order. Um, right, so what we want to do now is check I here. Um, actually, I'm just going to change this to a div for the reason that a UL is not allowed inside a p tag, as I found out in the previous video. Um, so inside this block we want some PHP, so PHP, and what we want to do is check if the errors array, so if the error, if to check if the errors array is not empty, so if empty errors is false, here we want to display the, um, 
list of errors. Else, spell it right. Else, just this. So, just for simplicity, instead of closing and opening PHP tags, I'm just going to echo it like so. And close the text here. I mean, normally HTML goes outside of PHP, but I mean, like, it's two extra lines for one line of HTML. This doesn't seem worth it. So I just did echo. It's basically the same thing. Just, yeah, you can do whatever you like. Well, no, you can do either this or having it outside of the text. Or print. Um, which is similar to echo, but it's a function. Don't know what I'm talking about, print. Okay, um, so inside uh, this inside this um, check here what we're going to do is output the ul and ul tags and do the for each loop uh, it's basically the same as we did on the register page so what we're going to do is close the php tags open new ones and um, here we're going to have ul ut ul and ul and then inside here php php and then we're going to have for each for wait what for each <laughs> errors as error and we're gonna do echo something and that something is gonna be li li and then here we're gonna have error and that is it for the um, login page I'll just demonstrate the error stuff. Um, if I submit an empty form, you see this is replaced by um, that link to the register page has been replaced by the username, the errors, basically the username can't be empty, the password can't be empty, and username and password is incorrect because there isn't a user with an empty username and an empty password. Um, at the moment we would actually, oh no, we wouldn't, of course we wouldn't, silly me, ignore that last bit. Um, uh, so yeah, that's it. Um, if we just try now and log in with our username test and password of test, you see we get redirected to protected and we get you are logged in as test, which is basically what we coded it to do. <laughs> um, again, this should have a link to log out, but I think I did say I will add that, and I have got some spare minutes, so let's do that. So open up protected. Let's just in a new oops in a new p tag. Let's have. Um, a href equals log out dot php log out question mark a wasn't too difficult so now we get this log out link if we click that we log out and go back to the login page if we click register we go to the register page so let's register a new user called simon not in capitals simon um, password will be um, pass pass so we're registered, we're registered, we're logged in as Simon. If I click not now and log out, we can register, we can log in as Simon and uh, pass. We log back in. If I go to the database, it browse. You see, we get Simon in the database and a different hash. So basically, this is done. End of tutorial. Um, obviously, there's no limit to how many users you can have. Um, I mean, in a, further, in a later tutor tutorial, I might cover sort of giving them levels. So you can like have admin users with various levels of permission. Um, that might be a little bit complicated actually, I don't know. Um, so yeah, that is it. So thank you for watching and hopefully I've taught you something useful. And you can maybe laugh at me rambling on about basically nothing for however long it's been. Almost, no, over an hour, an hour and fifteen. Okay, so thanks for watching and goodbye, I guess. <laughs>